This is one of the best beginner decks in Marvel Snap. The first deck is the big hitting deck. I like to call it the big boys deck because there's a lot of powerful cards in this deck composition. This is the one you're gonna want to use when you first load up the game. The majority of the cards in this deck you'll have very early on and there's a lot of firepower to work with here. The core strategy is to get one location filled with low to medium cost cards like Ant-Man, Hawkeye, Domino, Captain America, and Mr. Fantastic. Then use your big hitters at the end of the game to solidify whichever location you need to steal from the opponent to get two of the three location win. More often than not, playing Hulk on turn six will be just enough to get you the win on a location or even win the location by himself as 12 points at a single location in one round is pretty big for beginners. Let me walk you through what an ideal game would look like at each turn so you know exactly how to use this deck and its strategy to win your games. On turn one, you want to put down Ant-Man on the left location if the location is favorable to ongoing cards or favorable in any way to Ant-Man and his abilities. We want to fill up this location to maximize Ant-Man's ability. We want to have three other cards with him so he can maximize his power all the way up to four. If the left location is not favorable, then I would play him in the middle location. Now, if you don't have Ant-Man in your hand to start the game, you can play Hawkeye in either the left or middle location as well. On turn two, you're always going to draw Domino. That's her special ability. So the good news is you're guaranteed to be able to play Domino on turn two. Add her to the location that you put Ant-Man or Hawkeye on. Either one is going to get that boost from having another card there. Ant-Man obviously will still need two more cards to have his full ability, but Hawkeye, if you play a card domino right after playing Hawkeye, you'll get that bonus there as well. On turn three, ideally you have one of the three cost cards here. If you played in the middle location so far, then use Mr. Fantastic so both the other locations on the left and the right side get plus two power. If you played on the left or right location, you can play Captain America with the two other cards that you already have down to boost them with plus one power each. And if you have Ant-Man down, you are one step closer to maximizing his ability. Now, if you want to take a chance and play on a new location, in other words, you don't have Mr. Fantastic or Captain America in your hand right now, you should probably play Morph and hope that it's a high power card that he copies from your opponent's hand. That way we can capitalize on this in the later rounds and only have to pay three energy for it. Since we only have one four cost card in our deck here, we want to play Jessica Jones if possible. Play her in a new location or any location that you know you're not going to be playing a card on next turn as she's going to give you a plus four power bonus if you don't play any cards there the next turn. Next turn is turn five, so we're likely gonna be using one of our five point cards, either Claw, Devil Dinosaur, or Iron Man, so think ahead on where you'd wanna play one of those and not put those where Jessica Jones is going to be. What I like to do usually is pair her with Morph if you already have him down because generally speaking, if Morph does well and copies a high power card from your opponent's hand and you pair it with Jessica Jones and play nothing else there next round, there's a good chance you're gonna have at least 10 to 15 power at that location. Also keep in mind, we'll be able to come back and play cards with her again in turn six if that's the best move at the time. Now, if you don't have Jessica Jones in your hand at this point, then I would play a combo of a one cost card and a three cost card in unison to maximize their abilities. Since we have three three cost cards and two one cost cards, there's a decent chance we'll have at least one or two of these available to play again on turn four. Turn five, this is where we really have options and we wanna do the math of the game that we're in. If we have a lot of cards in our hand still, we can play Devil Dino to get plus two power for each card that's in our hand. But more often than not, we're gonna wanna play Claw or Iron Man in this turn. Play Claw if you can confidently be leading two or even all three locations after playing him. Play Iron Man if you have a location that will be almost unbeatable or impossible for the opponent to beat if you put him down in that spot. Turn six, Onslaught is going to double any of the other five cost cards we have as they are all ongoing abilities. Iron Man has double the location power, Devil Dinosaur is plus two for every card in your hand, and Claw adds six points to the location to the right of him. So if you play Onslaught with any of these cards, it's going to do their ability again. So if you pair him with Iron Man, for example, that's a four times power at that spot. If you pair him with Claw, you'll get plus 12 power on the location to the right. But if the game didn't unfold where you can work with ongoing abilities very well, then you bust out whole 
bulk and drop 12 points where you need it most to finish the mission. Let me know how you guys do with this deck in the comments below as I've found it to be the most successful deck all the way up to level 30.